Stephen Hawking in his latest book says God bah humbug. He can prove the non-existence of God. The James Webb Space Telescope is very much a part of that exploration. Beetlejuice, a star that has captivated scientists for many years, is known for its massive size and has been the focus of extensive scientific research. Situated in our galaxy, it surpasses our own sun in magnitude, raising questions about its formation and eventual demise. Recently, the strange behavior exhibited by Betelgeuse has caused even greater concern among scientists. The star has been displaying irregular patterns of dimming and brightening, leading some experts to speculate on its impending destruction. Famous physicist Michio Kaku has predicted that Betelgeuse will soon undergo a supernova event. This astronomical phenomenon involves the star's explosive demise, resulting in the release of an immense amount of energy. Naturally, such predictions raise an important question. What implications does Betelgeuse's explosion hold for us here on Earth? Could this cataclysmic event spell disaster for our planet? Let us delve into the alarming details surrounding Betelgeuse's anticipated destruction, as foreseen by Michio Kaku, and consider how this astronomical development may impact not only our galaxy, but also our everyday lives on Earth. Every second, countless stars, including our Sun, produce immense heat and light through powerful nuclear reactions. Among these stars is Betelgeuse, which is nearing the end of its life and is expected to unleash one of the most awe-inspiring explosions ever witnessed in the universe. So what exactly is Betelgeuse? When discussing powerful stars, one cannot overlook Betelgeuse. It is a red supergiant star of such enormous size that it is one of the largest stars visible to the naked eye. Betelgeuse is also known as Alpha Orionis in the Bayer designation system, which assigns the Alpha title to the brightest star in a constellation. However, in reality, Betelgeuse is the second brightest star in the Orion constellation, with Rigel being the brightest. Nevertheless, due to its variable brightness, Betelgeuse sometimes outshines Rigel. This likely led Johann Bayer designating Betelgeuse as Alpha Orionis and Rigel as Beta Orionis when he published the Uranometria in 1603. Betelgeuse is a variable star, meaning its apparent brightness fluctuates from 0 to plus 1.6. Consequently, it's the second brightest star in Orion and the tenth brightest star in the night sky. Interestingly, despite being just 10 million years old, Betelgeuse is relatively young compared to other stars. For instance, our Sun is approximately 5 billion years old. However, Betelgeuse is an evolved star. Despite its youth, it consumes fuel at a faster rate than the Sun because larger stars require more fuel to sustain themselves. While Betelgeuse may be young, it compensates for its age with its colossal size. This massive star is about a thousand times larger than our Sun. To put it into perspective, if we were to replace the Sun with Betelgeuse, it would extend beyond the asteroid belt and even surpass Jupiter. Consequently, it would engulf all the inner planets of our solar system – Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. Despite its vast size, Betelgeuse is only 16.5 times more massive than the Sun. Betelgeuse has 126,000 solar luminosities, making it look bright at 548 light-years away. Interestingly, Betelgeuse is cooler than the Sun, with a surface temperature of 3600 degrees Kelvin. The name Betelgeuse has an intriguing story behind it. Many stars have unique names derived from translations of foreign names, and sometimes there are mistranslations involved. That's what happened with Betelgeuse. In Arabic, the constellation of Orion was called Joz or Jauza. From this, Betelgeuse was referred to as Yad al Jauzar, which means the hand of Al Jazar. However, during the 13th century, there was an error in the Arabic name, and Yar became Barn. This mistake stuck, and that's how the European name Betelgeuse originated. Betelgeuse is not difficult to locate in the night sky. In fact, it can be used as a reference point to find other stars. The Orion constellation is one of the easiest to spot, and many people use it to navigate the night sky. By drawing a line through the three stars of Orion's belt and extending it upwards, you can find Aldebaran, the brightest star in the Taurus constellation. 
From there, you can continue to the Pleiades. Similarly, you can follow Betelgeuse as a guide to find other stars. By connecting Rigel and Betelgeuse and extending the line past the Red Supergiant, you'll reach Castor and Pollux, the two brightest stars in the Gemini constellation. Another reason Betelgeuse stands out is its distinctive bright red color. Being a red giant star, it's easily recognizable. However, the best time to observe Betelgeuse depends on your location on Earth. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, the winter months from January to April are ideal. During this period, the star rises just as the sun is setting below the horizon. While Betelgeuse is fascinating for various reasons, its imminent fate has been attracting a lot of attention. Supernovae are among the most awe-inspiring events in the night sky. Stars, despite living for billions of years, eventually come to an end. And their demise is far from quiet. When a star reaches the end of its life, it explodes in a magnificent burst of light, creating a supernova. Supernovae can outshine entire galaxies for a short period and release more energy than our Sun will emit in its entire lifetime. NASA states that supernovae are the most significant explosions that occur in space. Even ancient astronomers lacking the advanced equipment we have today were aware of supernovae. The oldest recorded mention of a supernova is RCW 86, observed by Chinese astronomers in 185 AD. They noted that the star remained visible in the sky for eight months. In addition to RCW 86, Chinese and Korean astronomers witnessed the explosion of the Crab Nebula in 1054. Historical evidence suggests that the event might have been observed by Native Americans in the United States as well. The supernova was so bright that people could see it during daylight hours. The frequency of supernovae depend on your perspective. According to the European Space Agency, a supernova occurs once every 50 years in a galaxy the size of the Milky Way. This is equivalent to one supernova happening every 10 seconds in the entire universe. However, most of these events are too far away for us to see. There are two main kinds of supernovae, Type 1 and Type 2. Type 1 supernovae occur when white dwarf stars reach the end of their lives, and this is more common in star systems where two stars are very close to each other. As the gas from the companion star builds up on the white dwarf, it gets squeezed and triggers a powerful nuclear reaction inside, leading to a massive explosion known as a supernova. Astronomers use Type 1 supernovae, also called standard candles, to measure distances in space because they're believed to shine with the same level of brightness at their peak. However, Type 2 supernovae are the more intriguing ones. For a star to become a Type 2 supernova, it must meet certain conditions. First, it needs to be several times more massive than our Sun. These stars eventually run out of hydrogen and then helium fuel at their core. However, they are still massive enough to continue fusing carbon and progressively accumulate heavier elements at the center, forming layers similar to the layers of an onion. The elements become lighter as we move towards the outer part of the star. There's a specific mass level, known as the Chandrasekhar limit, that triggers an explosion. That's why these Type II supernovae are also called core collapse supernovae. When the explosion occurs, it sends out a shock wave that pushes the star's material into space, creating the supernova. What remains is an incredibly dense object called a neutron star, which is as small as a city but contains the mass of the Sun. Type II supernovae are further categorized based on their light patterns, which describe how the intensity of the light changes over time. For instance, the light from Type II L supernovae steadily decreases after the explosion while the light from Type II P supernovae remains steady for a long period before fading away. On the other hand, as stars become even more massive, they may not go to supernova, but instead collapse to form black holes. This happens when a star is larger than around 20 to 30 times the mass of our Sun. What does a supernova actually look like? Studies have revealed that before the magnificent explosion, a supernova behaves like a giant vibrating speaker and emits a sound that can be heard. The first time scientists witnessed a supernova in the act was in 2008. Astronomers observed an unusual burst of X-rays that was extremely bright and lasted for five minutes. However, further research showed that this supernova was quite atypical. This dramatic fate awaits Betelgeuse. 
It all began when scientists noticed that Betelgeuse had been gradually becoming dimmer for over a hundred years. Observations have shown that Betelgeuse, as a red supergiant star in its late stage, has brightened and dimmed repeatedly. The star expanded to an enormous size, and bubbles of material rose from within the star to its surface, and then sank back down, altering the distribution of hotter and cooler regions on the star's surface. These changes caused Betelgeuse to appear brighter or fainter over time. A group of astronomers, including an amateur astronomer, spent 25 years monitoring Betelgeuse's brightness using a telescope with a 10-inch diameter. They noticed that Betelgeuse was once again growing fainter. After a few months, they noticed that Betelgeuse had become fainter compared to the last 25 years. They posted a message on a website called the Astronomer's Telegram to inform other astronomers about this. Over time, Betelgeuse continued to get even fainter, reaching its lowest brightness in a century. This was quite surprising, because usually, Betelgeuse is one of the brightest stars visible in the night sky, ranking among the top six or seven. However, it had dropped significantly and now ranked as the 21st brightest star. This unexpected change caught the attention of the scientific community, leading them to seriously consider the possibility of Betelgeuse going supernova. Based on its mass, astronomers predict that the supergiant star will go supernova when it reaches approximately 10 million years old. At present, Betelgeuse is estimated to be around that age. During this time, scientists didn't fully understand what was happening to Betelgeuse. Although they suspected that something was amiss, what they were certain about, though, was that the star was very old and nearing the end of its life. Thanks to the Hubble Space Telescope, researchers were eventually able to gather clear information about Betelgeuse's condition. They made a significant discovery. A massive plume, stretching over a million miles, or 1.6 million kilometers, may have erupted from the star's interior. This event can be likened to a star quake, or an intense shockwave that caused a sizable chunk of the star's surface to be blown away. The ejected mass was a staggering 400 million times larger than the typical coronal mass ejections observed on the Sun. A coronal mass ejection, or CME, refers to a large cloud of electrically charged particles that originates from the Sun's upper atmosphere, or corona. When these hot plasma blobs, heated to extreme temperatures and propelled by a powerful burst of energy from a solar flare, encounter planets in their path, they can produce awe-inspiring effects. However, CMEs don't pose a direct threat to life on Earth. Nevertheless, they can potentially disrupt the technologies we depend on, such as the power grid and GPS accuracy. When CMEs reach Earth, they can trigger geomagnetic storms that generate ground-induced currents capable of damaging our power grid. They can also interfere with the precision of GPS, which is vital for numerous daily services. Solar flares and CMEs share a similar origin. They occur when a large portion of the Sun's magnetic field, pushing through its visible surface or photosphere, becomes compressed near its base and suddenly reconnects at a lower level. This process releases a tremendous amount of excess energy in the form of high-energy electromagnetic radiation. Consequently, the gases surrounding the reconnection site become intensely heated, reaching temperatures of about 36 million degrees Fahrenheit or 20 million degrees Celsius. At such extreme temperatures, the particles near the site, including those trapped in the isolated loop of the magnetic field above it, gain tremendous speed and energy. This results in the formation of an expansive bubble of hot gas that escapes the sun's gravitational force and races through space. CMEs can travel at astonishing speeds of hundreds of miles per second, allowing them to reach Earth in less than a day. Considering all the information about CMEs, it becomes clear why scientists were astonished by the observations of Betelgeuse. The star exhibited unusual behavior, as if its interior was experiencing some sort of bouncing motion due to the lack of certain materials. This phenomenon was unprecedented, as scientists had never witnessed such a massive ejection of mass from a star's surface. It was like witnessing the evolution of a star in real time. The researchers also used the information from various observatories to study the star, such as the Stellar Robotic Observatory in Spain's Canary Islands and NASA's Stereo spacecraft orbiting Earth. By combining different types of data, scientists were able to understand what happened during the star's eruption. One effect of the eruption was that a part of the star's lower atmosphere, called the photosphere, was blown off. 
This created a cool spot that was further hidden by the dust cloud caused by the eruption. The piece that was blown off was several times heavier than the Earth's moon, according to scientists. They explained that this cool spot and dust cloud were the reasons why Betelgeuse's light became dimmer. They also said that the star is still experiencing the effects of the eruption. Before the eruption, Betelgeuse had a pattern of becoming dimmer and brighter in a 400-day cycle, but that pattern disappeared temporarily. The materials from Betelgeuse's surface that moved to its outer atmosphere traveled at speeds of 200,000 miles per hour in just three months. Betelgeuse lost about twice as much material from its southern hemisphere into space compared to its usual amount. However, the extremely hot plasma cooled down significantly once it moved millions of miles away from Betelgeuse. It turned into dust grains that formed a cloud that blocked the star's light. Scientists were able to determine, using ultraviolet data, when Betelgeuse's outer atmosphere returned to normal, even though they could still observe the dimming through visible light. Although the outer atmosphere seemed to have returned to normal, the star's surface may still be vibrating. So what will happen when Betelgeuse eventually explodes in a supernova? While scientists don't have all the details, they have a fairly accurate idea of what the star's last days will look like and what that means for Earth. They gathered information for their predictions from a supernova event called Supernova 1987A. When Betelgeuse explodes, it will shine as brightly as the half moon, about nine times fainter than the full moon. This brightness will be visible from Earth for over three months. Before that happens, scientists will be prepared because they will have detected neutrinos or gravitational waves using instruments on Earth. They say that all the brightness from the explosion will be concentrated in one point. It will be so bright that you won't have to wait for nighttime to see it. It will be visible during the day for about a year. The bright spot will remain in the sky and will be visible to everyone. As the supernova dims, it will still be visible at night for several years. With a star that is visible even during the day for such a long time, it's certain to generate a lot of interest. Expect to see many YouTube videos and memes on social media. And with the advance warning that scientists expect Betelgeuse to provide, many people will be eagerly waiting for the explosion to occur. When the process is complete, stargazers will notice a change. The Orion constellation will be missing its left shoulder, and people will need to use other stars as reference points in the night sky. Will humans be affected by the explosion? Will the radiation reach us? Don't worry too much about Betelgeuse's supernova. In order to have a significant impact on us, it would have to occur relatively close in terms of the vast distances in the universe. We're talking about a distance of several dozen light years from us. Luckily, Betelgeuse is much farther away, around 700 light years or more. So we can relax and enjoy the spectacle. However, this doesn't mean that Earth won't be affected at all. Animals, especially those that rely on the moon for navigation and are easily confused by artificial light, will be impacted by Betelgeuse's supernova. When Betelgeuse appears as an additional light source in the sky, it'll be a confusing time for these creatures. Astronomers will also be affected, despite their excitement to witness such a bright supernova like Betelgeuse. It will disrupt their observation schedules. When the moon is already shining brightly, it'll become difficult for them to see other celestial objects. So when Betelgeuse is visible in the sky, there won't be enough darkness for astronomers to work effectively. Even studying Betelgeuse itself will be challenging, as its brightness will overwhelm their instruments. Ground-based telescopes will require modifications to handle the excessive light, possibly by reducing the amount of light they collect. As for when this is likely to happen, Unfortunately, it may not occur within the lifetime of anyone watching this video. Betelgeuse could still be going strong even 100,000 years from now. This massive star is still burning helium at its core, indicating that there's plenty of time before the supernova occurs. So what are your thoughts on Betelgeuse going supernova? Let us know in the comments section.